It's been 47 years since uh, the Phantom Toll Booth was written, and I still have a lot of uh, college students who work with us that will cite that book as one of their very favorite books. Just one more book for you, sir. Okay. support of Reader to Reader and his lifelong devotion to literacy, we want to present this award to Norton Justin. Uh, it really is a great honor and I'm very, very pleased, except there's been kind of a misunderstanding. When I spoke to David originally, it was my impression that I was coming here to receive the Newbery Medal. <laughs> November 16th, 2008. Authors and illustrators are genuinely supportive of each other, and the sentiment appears to be that if one succeeds, they all succeed. Never has this been more apparent to us than during today's 19th annual Children's Illustration Show at the R. Michelson Galleries. We witnessed a genuine camaraderie and a passion to make a difference as the event raised money for Reader to Reader, a nonprofit organization that distributes books to schools and libraries in need. Reader to Reader honored author Norton Jester at this event for his generosity and passion in promoting literacy. So, what does someone like me do at an event that's packed with talented children's book creators? Well, I sought insight into promoting a love of reading. I'm Mark Blevis. On this edition of Just One More Book, Rockstars of Reading Part 20, Advice for Aspiring Readers. Three pieces of advice to an aspiring reader. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Trust your instinct. Um, find books that you love. Um, you have, don't have to make any excuse for either reading or not reading a book. Um, and don't, this is probably a terrible thing to say being a writer, but don't feel obligated to finish a book if you're not enjoying it. Look at the pictures first. If you can't read, you can read the pictures before you can read the words. So that's just the beginning. You will be surprised at how many books there are out there. Go to your library in school. Go to your library in town. Um, go to the bookstore. There are so many books out there. Uh, that you could sit down and start reading now, and a month from now you would only begin to have read just a tiny bit of what is out there. So if you have anything that you particularly love, you're going to find hundreds of books on the subject. Uh, this is uh, Jared Krasowska speaking here, and if I was asked to give three pieces of advice for aspiring readers, and I would say, number one, find books that you enjoy. So find stories that you can get really excited about. And then two, uh, read those books as often as possible. And in your own free time, try to read. And then three, uh, create new adventures for those characters and write some of your own stories. And that will get you, the writing will get you back to reading. I remember when I first learned to read, I would follow my mother around. She would be getting ready to go to a meeting at night. And I can remember just sitting in the bathroom while she put her makeup on. And I was re my first book that I read was about a f uh, dog that lived at the fire station. And um, I just remember how exciting it, it was. So just to practice reading. And if you don't know what a word, how to, to read a word yet, ask about it, ask how to read it, and keep practicing it. My name's Ruth Sanderson. When I was growing up, my very favorite stories were fairy tales. And I would still recommend to people that aspire to read to, um, to go out to seek out um, different kinds of fairy tales. Um, and you can find them in simplified versions in picture books. And you can also find complete, um, complete versions of stories uh, such as Grimm's fairy tales in, in big anthologies. Also, um, look for books that that have subjects that interest you. Another thing that interested me um, were horse stories, because I love horses. So if you love horses, look for horse stories. If you love cats, look for cat stories. You get the idea. And happy reading. With reading, it's good to go outside your comfort zone. Um, there 
if you walk into any library, there's so many possibilities. Um, there's so many. There's no one right way to write. And so, as readers, I think sometimes we, you know, maybe because we're tired of reading at the end of the day, we get, you know, we, we sort of favor one kind of voice or one kind of author. And I think it's really important to um, just visit the spectrum of writing. I'm David Milgram. My advice for aspiring readers, probably first and foremost, is uh, Frog and Toad, uh, Curious George, Dr. Seuss. And here's a fourth thing, a bonus. And that's, I read comics. I say, don't waste your time on a book that you don't really want to read. I know in school you have to read books that you don't want to read, but I, a lot of people sort of feel triumphant if they get through a book that they have to slog through. Okay, this is Judy Birdsalt. For you readers out there, don't let anybody tell you that what you like isn't the right thing to like. And if you don't like something, that's okay. You don't have to explain it. It's just true. And don't worry about reading things over and over again because that's the best way to do it. I just think it would be wonderful to spend more time with a book than with the television or with the computer because there's so much magic in books and so many worlds to learn about. This is Jeff Mack. Sometimes what you're reading you could imagine it illustrated many different ways, and you could ask yourself, why is it illustrated the way that the artist decided to illustrate it? Of all the styles that artists could have chosen to use, why did they choose that one? Just try to find the books that you really love to read and, and figure out, try to ask yourself, what is it about this book that, that, that I really relate to? What's, uh, what's, what's so interesting about this book to me? Um, is it the characters? Is it the way that the drawings are made? Um, is it, the, uh, is it the, the plot of the story? It, you can learn a lot about yourself by identifying what it is in the story that, that, that strikes you the, the, the strongest. If you're not, if you don't love it, sometimes it does take a while until you love it. And I think you sort of know that even when you're getting through the beginning of it. But put it down and find another one because there's always another one. Hello, this is uh, Tony Dietrich-Lisi and my three bits of advice, I don't know, I don't know if it's actually three, but my advice is to a young reader would be to read any and everything. I loved reading the backs of cereal boxes. I loved reading comic books. I loved reading the captions in National Geographic magazines. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a book. If you like to read, find something that suits you, something that interests you and read. And that goes for, I actually think adults don't have to, if your kids are now 18 or out of the house, it's still, I think there's some wonderful picture books out there, and certainly uh, the old classics like uh, Charlotte's Web or, uh, you know, uh, some of these novels that we read as kids, I, I think are, are still great reads. This is Barry Moser, and um, the question is, um, if I understand it right, what advice would I have to a youngster about reading and I can only come up with one at this moment and that is don't be afraid of it. When I was a kid I was very afraid of reading. I was slightly dyslexic, couldn't read well, had a hard time conjugating my verbs. Time come to read out loud in front of a class I would choke up, couldn't do it, scared me to death. It was after college that, um, that I started to read and now um, I read 75 books a year, something like that. My wife reads about 250, so... You're a slow reader. I'm a slow reader. The, the other thing I, that, about advice for readers for me would be read, read all books. I read children's books. I love children's books. Occasionally I prefer a middle-grade novel to an adult book. So I know there's a lot of um, school pressure also to read right on your level. But I believe that, that you'll learn new things by reading things that might be a little over your level. And, you and learn, a little under your and level. And you learn everything by reading things that are way under your level. I'm Norton Juster. No, I'm Norton Juster. No, he's Norton I'm Juster. Norton. I'm Norton Juster. <laughs> I think reading to kids is quite wonderful. And I think what I used to do with my granddaughter, which works well, is we share the reading. You know, I'll read a chapter, then she reads a chapter, and it goes back and forth. And you'd be su surprised how quickly you get through a whole book because they won't stop. I'm Shelley Rotner. To see, either through words or photos or illustrations, a different way of seeing the world, to learn something, and 
to enjoy. Well, we're a public charity based on the campus of Amherst College, and what we do is collect books from all kinds of sources and build collections in school libraries and classrooms and uh, community libraries in poor communities all over the country. How successful is the program being to date? Well, over the last eight years, we've donated over two million books. We work in towns in rural Mississippi and as far away as Alaska, rural Maine, inner cities like Detroit, New York City. So we reach a wide area. Sometimes we reach places on uh, Native American reservations, and some of the schools we reach uh, don't have a bookstore. They're in communities that say there's no bookstore within 200 miles of every direction. So people are really cut off and isolated from books, and we really try to provide a very valuable resource to them. Have you been able to measure the success of the program? Well, you know, I think that success comes when you find that people are engaged in reading in communities where reading was not a big deal, and people ask for more books, and uh, people are excited about books. Uh, we have a mentoring program that we do uh, where we pair up Amherst College students with students in schools around the country, and they read books together and then communicate about them online, and that has really gotten lots of times students that did not read before to be very engaged readers. I, I tend to think that we need to keep an open mind. I love the book as a technology and I hope it will always be here as, as we know it, but I think reading is, is not just the book. There's all sorts of ways to read. You could read a, 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 an illustration, you could read a picture in a museum, you can, uh, you know, you're really reading dance, this, the, the sort of phrasing in a, in, a, in a dance recital. And so I think there's all sorts of ways to read. And I think we sometimes compartmentalize reading as one thing. And I, I think reading hits us in all aspects of, life, of our lives. And I think we need to show, especially young kids, that there's if you're struggling with a book, there's other ways to read. When is it okay to put down a children's picture? When, when, you fin when, when you've finished reading it and you want to read it again the next day. It, it, when, when it's okay giving to them move, up, move away from you, them. You, you never do that. You never move away from them. I think the zoom is awesome. Look at that. Oh, it's like I'm right there. Oh, I do the zoom back. What are you going to say to a three year old to get them excited about reading? Look That's where the, the candy is. No, no. Look at the pictures. Oh, see, now you now you messed oh, it up. We had answers up. for the other like, one. Don't quit your day job and stuff like that. Well, that is my advice for an aspiring reader. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> that's that's number one. Um, have fun with it. Um, learning to read is like learning to walk. If you do it well, you can get away from your parents. I think that they found that the number one thing that engages kids in reading is if you read to your kids, read to them yeah, at bedtime, okay, yeah. read them to them at other times of the day, that that is the number one thing that engages kids in reading because they then want to do that for themselves. Yeah, the nice thing about reading to kids is you can read the phone book to them. They just, you know, love being cuddling up and being read to.